right. Okay. Right. So we uh, the last one we looked at was uh, the Bob principle, where uh, you know Bob has a problem with everything, right? So if Bob has a problem with everything and everyone. So that uh, we really need to seriously see, you know, uh, is Bob doing okay, rather than you know everyone else uh, with whom Bob seems to have a problem, right? So is Bob doing okay? So in this case, you know, we're looking at ourselves and we're saying, you know, am I doing okay? You know, am I the cause of the problem? Am I the cause of um, uh, you know uh, developing that problem into something big than it already is, or Am I being a problem solver? Okay, um, we need to. It's it's a hard uh, it's a hard call uh, when we actually you know looking at ourselves, asking that very objectively. You know, am I causing this problem, uh, or am I really solving it? Am I doing everything to solve it? Okay, um, so. <clears throat> When we make that correction, that also helps build trust. Okay, rather than create problems, and rather than uh, uh, allowing problems to fester and uh, you know grow, if we are problem solvers, then it builds trust. Okay, um, let's look at now the next one, which is the approachability principle. Okay, um, when we are approachable. When people find it easier to access, to have access to into our lives, or have access to us, whether to communicate, whether to discuss, whether to uh, it could be for you know whether to inquire about certain things, and when people find it easier to first of all approach us and to communicate with us, to interact with us, it's not uh, you know it's not like a big thing. For them to think through and overthink and and come to that place of uh, you know actually being able to speak to us, being able to communicate with us, then it's it puts them at ease, right? It puts the team at ease. It's put it puts whoever wants to interact with us at ease, and uh, and this helps again in the area of trust. Okay, so again. You know, we are asking ourselves: Am I, am I approachable? Okay, do people find me approachable, or uh, you know, have I unnecessarily put a lot of things in place uh, so that access to me and uh, approach to me uh, have have made it difficult? Right. So uh, it's it's very very uh, very important that. Uh, people find us approachable. People find us easy to communicate with. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you know when we uh, when we look back, we can we can I mean, or in in our own lives we can see that okay there are some people who are easy to get along with, and then it's always joy to work with such people. Right? It's always uh, we look forward to it. But there are some who we find very difficult to get along with work with it's always a it's always an effort like it's always a, it's always a challenge okay so it's it's good to look you know what creates that why is it a challenge what is it about that person uh, that you know it's it's a it's a good uh, it's a good case study on how not to do how not to be right what is it that uh, that causes this kind of a dynamic right? when and it's 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 difficult to work. It's difficult to get through. It's difficult to communicate um, and uh, work alongside. Right? So we can avoid all those things in our lives. Okay. So simple things: how to be more ap approachable, <clears throat> to exhibit personal warmth, right? To not be that aloof um, person who is so engrossed in his or her own. Thoughts is our, her own world. Okay, um, when you walk into the office, when you um, you know walk in, and interact with, when you meet others, <laughs> sorry, are you uh, are you exuding that warmth, personal warmth? Meaning, are you friendly? Are you 
Are you wishing them? <clears throat> are you uh, just inquiring about them? You know, just a simple hello with a with a with a great smile, and uh, and, uh, and a couple of words to find out how they are and uh, you know, if they're doing okay. Now that's uh, that's what we call as personal warm. Right? You warm up with such a person, and do you exhibit that? Now, do I exhibit that? Yes, <clears throat> it is. You know, there are times when uh, we, we get up and then we are so bogged down by the challenges, you know, things, problems that need solving, things that need to be handled. You know, maybe there are there are the, the list of things to be done in a particular day or within that particular hour. You know, it's it's a whole lot of things right, that we need to do. But let's not forget to uh, to to be warm and friendly with others right even even for a moment let's not let's not forget that okay yeah. the second thing is to appreciate differences in people to appreciate that uh, you know well not everybody is the same to appreciate uh, the differences to so generally I, I would say to to appreciate people you know, to see the qualities to see the gold in people and to appreciate that and to mention that Right, and to be um, and to be sincere about it. Right. Well, if we uh, if we are not sincere about it, if it can come across as being very very uh, inauthentic, and maybe it, it it can come across as okay, what is the agenda? You know? Why is this? Uh, why why is this uh, lack of authenticity? Why is this flattery? And right. it can come across uh, very you know very clearly as uh, as uh, you know, the person can think, okay, why is this person saying this? Why is this flattery? Right. So um, be sincere, but uh, appreciate right? and appreciate the differences. Right? Not everybody is going to be the same. So, which means that you, you know, even as we look at others, you see that and appreciate that. Recognize the difference in people, differences in people, and and appreciate that. Okay. Um, the third one is to maintain an even temperament, being consistent. Okay, um, and I, I don't know if you worked with people or worked. You had bosses, so you know you you walk into the office and then you see them one look, and you know that okay, uh, boss is in a bad mood, right? or everybody's whispering saying boss is in a bad mood, boss is in a bad mood, and uh, the thing is, you know, certain days boss in a bad mood certain days the boss is in a good mood right so it uh, <clears throat> so what happens is people are guessing you know is he in a bad mood is she in a bad mood is he in a good mood today right and uh, and that puts them in a difficult place they cannot be who they want to be who they are right? so uh, to be consistent in our mood right but having said that you know uh, we we have our challenges. We have our challenges. It's very difficult. While we while you know we we need to um, <clears throat> we need to you know focus on the task at hand. But at the same time, when we go when I mean, we work as a human being, there are all these challenges which which are there with us. You know, things that happen at home, things that happen in our family. You know, uh, we cannot just completely cut away. It's there, it's there with us on our minds. Right? Things that we need to do at the end of the day, we get back, maybe some problem uh, with a spouse, maybe something with with uh, with our children, and, and you know all that is playing in our mind. You know, as much as possible, you know we we need to uh, we need to try and put that aside. In the sense, we trust in the Lord. Uh, we commit all these things to the Lord. And uh, we come to a place of focusing on the task at hand, right? And, and particularly, I'm talking about a very formal kind of a, you know work situation, or even even if it is going to be you know something like a semi-formal um, uh, relationship at work or ministry, right? It can be the culture can be very very <laughs> I'm sorry, very very informal, and even those you know in the sense where people will. Uh, we're able to talk about things at home. We're able to, you know, it's the culture. 
uh, in that particular place where you can talk about challenges at home, etc., and and at the workplace, right? Uh, there are there are there are some places where you can't just bring that in. You know, it's an absolute no. You just focus on what's what needs to be done, and you get it done. Like it's that kind of an environment. But anyway, so whatever be that environment, we need to be. Um, you know, we need we need to uh, not let the things of maybe uh, our personal lives not let what is happening in our um, you know in our homes in our families not let it affect affect us uh, or we need to deal with it rise above that challenge and not let it affect our interaction with our colleagues interaction with our team. Okay, so this consistent, being consistent in our uh, in our temperament, right, is so very important. That also makes it makes us approachable uh, for others. Okay, being sensitive to other people's feelings, right, uh, in our decisions, in our uh, in our interactions, being sensitive to others. Now, um, being sensitive means meaning being aware. Okay, this these words will have this kind of an impact on people. Right? These uh, decisions will have uh, this kind of consequence, or this is the you know uh, emotionally and relationally. This will um, this is um, this is possible. I mean, this is what will happen uh, with other people. Right? To be to be aware of that and to be sensitive of that. Right. Um, like again, coming back to that policy, uh, that principle, uh, what we see in efficient speaking the truth in love, growing up in all things, speaking the truth in love. That doesn't mean that it's a very, um, you know, um, always speaking, um, you know, things that are pleasing to others. That others will always find it, uh, find us lovable, and you know, it's not that. But speaking the truth, being firm, but in undergirding that with love. Okay, so being sensitive. Okay, to others' feelings is very important. Okay, uh, be re realistic about others' weaknesses and also your own. Okay, um, people have people do have areas of um, areas that needs growth and change, and so do we. Okay, so to be realistic about that, not to cover that up, and uh, at the same time, not to overtly just put it on display. Right? To be realistic about it, yes, I recognize it, and that you have a you know this area of change, and you're dealing with it, and at the same time with others. That also you know comes from that place of being sensitive to others, other people's where they are, other people's needs and their feelings. Right? Um, then to develop the ability to forgive easily, and also to ask for forgiveness. Now, now this is a big one. Right. This is a big one, which uh, challenges us. Um, um, and it's it's a difficult one, right? To be able to forgive and to move on, okay. and to do this again, I just want to repeat that to do this in the right way, right? When we when we forgive, it is not to uh, sweep away or to condone the wrong thing, right? Um, that is doing it the wrong way, right? To be able to forgive, uh, but to to address the wrong, right? To address the wrong, to address um, the negative thing, but to go beyond that and to forgive, okay? And uh, to communicate that, to uh, ask for forgiveness if it is uh, something that we have done, right? to ask for forgiveness. And uh, and this is a this really um, you know builds trust in people, you know, and and displays sincerity and uh, authentic authenticity. And it can only come from a place of being secure in Christ, right? To ask for forgiveness, um, uh, and uh, maybe if it if something was done. Publicly, uh, if uh, something was said or done publicly to hurt or to wrong a person, 
to ask for forgiveness, maybe in that same setting, or in the public setting. Right. Um, if it was if it was a private setting, that is fine, right? To ask for forgiveness and to uh, to move on. But if it was a public setting, you know, which which might be difficult for us to ask, especially if uh, Let's say if uh, if you're a leader of a team, or if you're a spiritual overseer, right? If you're a pastor, and uh, you know, and things were said and things were done in a public setting, like maybe in front of the whole church, maybe maybe in a you know in a group setting. To once we realize that that was wrong, to ask for forgiveness in a, in a similar setting or in the same kind of setting. Right, it's very very important. Right? That builds trust like nothing else can, and that um, you know shows sincerity uh, and truthfulness like nothing else can. At the same time, knowing that okay, this person, I can go to this person. Right, this person, sorry, this person realizes what was wrong and it's is not afraid to admit it. Um, when it is wrong, right? so um, this is the big one, right? Uh, and if we would have it, you know, as leaders, as ministers, if we would follow this difficult principle, if we make it part of our lives, then it would really change the whole dynamics of the team and the ministry that we are leading. It's not a, it's not a display of weakness, like when, um, and it's not like. Yeah. We, you know, we ask, we make a big thing out of something small. No, if it was, if it, if this was done, and if this was done publicly, to ask for forgiveness and to apologize. You know? And I've, um, I've seen, I've, and personally, I've seen that in action, and uh, and it it really changes, um, it changes us because it's a it's a, it's a big step. Right. If we are the ones who are asking for forgiveness, it's a big step. Excuse me. Excuse me. <clears throat> and if uh, uh, and also, it changes the lives of people around. Um, it communicates so much um, of sincerity and so much of strength. People don't see that as a weakness. But um, uh, but people understand, right? Your heart. So uh, so this is uh, something that even though we're looking at you know uh, it, we're studying it as a the approachability principle and building trust, it has so many uh, um, outworkings of that, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Then the then the last one in this about building trust, building mutual trust, is the Foxhole principle. In a sense, it just uh, you know even we know what a foxhole is uh, you know in the uh, in the army um, you know, especially during war they just dig a foxhole and, uh, and it's called a foxhole but it's a small one which uh, in which you can be and which can take one more person there and uh, it it protects from the enemy's bullets. Um, in, in time of war, so it's 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 a foxhole, you know, which has something for you and then for another person, another soldier. So the foxhole principle is that uh, just to recognize that nobody is uh, an island. Right? Nobody is an island. We all need relationships, um, and relationships in good times and especially in difficult times we all need and we thrive we are created to be in community right and uh, we all receive strength and support because we are the body of christ and also in all our other relationships with family and friends and so on uh, and even in formal relationships and office and colleagues right um, we are not an island isolated, but we are we are actually a network. We are part of uh, a body. Right? So these are there to keep us strong. So recognize that. Right? 
these are there to keep us strong. These are there to so that we can help in times of challenging times and and uh, uh, when there's trouble. So rather than striving to isolate, work towards being part. Right? Rather than pulling away and isolating, uh, work towards being part of something uh, which involves people. That's the Foxwell principle. Keep that in mind, because uh, maybe this should have been the first principle. You know, the thing is, uh, uh, sometimes we we have that. You know, because of who we are temperamentally, we have the tendency to just pull away, right? and this pulling away doesn't help in building mutual trust. Rather than you know, rather than pull away, if we were to have the opposite, if we were to do the opposite, be in the midst be with people recognize that uh, we are not designed to pull away but rather to be in connection uh, with people and of course with god himself right so that's the foxhole principle to have that mindset it, just, it, it can help us um to to really recognize the fact that we need one another and therefore we need to build trust right okay so we looked at five and uh, any questions here or any any challenges that you you feel in 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 actually working out any of these principles any questions uh, or maybe some experience that you had um none whatsoever yeah, um, I have a question. So yeah, we learned in the Bob principle, like sometimes the mistake is on our side, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, I think when, when the mistake is on our side, the first thing that hits us is guilt, a, a lot of guilt when you understand that the, your sister mistake, uh, there's a weight of uh, guilt. Uh, it, it happens to me. So... Uh, so how do you overcome it? Uh, uh, maybe by analyzing, maybe by not repeating. But sometimes when you remember it again, it again puts you in the guilt. Uh, that's what happens mm. to me sometimes. So uh, I just yeah. want to get a little more deeper. How to? Uh, I feel like sometimes forgiving others is very easy mm. uh, because we learn a lot about forgiveness, how Jesus forgave and everything. But when it comes to us, uh, when we know like we should do this thing like this when we do study the bible we do study like uh, uh, this is how we should walk this is how we should talk and so many other things in the bible and then still you do a mistake it's like it's like a big big burden to me sometimes so uh, how do we forgive ourselves and uh, this is something that I, this is a little more deeper i thought i can say. yeah 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 it is um <clears throat> Yeah, so when we look at uh, the law principle and also see that, okay, the, the, uh, the problem is with us. And, uh, you know, the Bob principle is that um, it, it's um, just to clarify that, uh, you know, if we are having problem with each and every person that we interact with, you know, that's the Bob principle. Right? Uh, so um, in the, you know, why are we studying it? Because it's about building trust. And uh, this problem, interpersonal, uh, you know, challenge that we have with each and every person that we interact with, right? Then, you know, then we are just calling it. You know, John C. Maxwell calls it the Bob Principle, and it's it's good to look within and say, okay, is the problem with me? You know, I seem to be having a problem with every person, uh, you know, maybe in the team or whoever I'm overseeing or whoever I'm working with. Uh, then, you know, is the problem with me? You know, it's a, it's an important question to ask. Okay, and uh, that will actually set things right. If the problem is with me, you know, what should I do? Okay, uh, I think your question is a little uh, different in the sense. Okay, if I <clears throat> if I have uh, I recognize that it's because of uh, me that a situation has gone wrong, then <clears throat> you know how do I overcome it? How do I set it right? Right, and because of this overwhelming guilt. Uh, uh, thing. Okay, so guilt is a good indicator. It's just like uh, you know, uh, a temperature 
that we actually uh, have because uh, the temperature itself you know fever itself is not the is, is not uh, the thing it's an indicator of something that's happening you know uh, wrong uh, somewhere in our body right so guilt okay uh, it's, a, it's a good indicator um, but we go beyond that okay so this is guilt I'm feeling guilty uh, and uh, and the thing is that God does not want me to stay in that place okay? that is true to recognize that okay god does not want me to stay in that place of guilt i need to move on okay so i need to set things right if it is in my power if it is my control so that means that i need to okay whatever is wrong has happened okay let me set it right uh, if it involves people you know do i do something reach out uh, own up set it right if it's just for me you know, I did not do certain things. I did certain things. If it's if it involves me, what can I do to set it right? That's the that to have that mindset. You now, to take on that mindset, the mind of Christ, to say that okay, uh, this is what I want to do. Uh, the Bible talks about you know a righteous man falls seven times, but every time he picks himself up, he rises up, and this rising up is important. Yes, uh, for some you know. Uh, uh, like for us who are some of us you know it's it's emotionally draining and it's it's difficult uh, but to come to that place saying that god wants me to you know when we when we realize that okay god wants me to come up god is not wanting me to push me down and wanting me to stay in that place and god is lifting me up he wants me to come so let me go with that okay um, so to have that mindset will will greatly help because you know that okay god wants me god doesn't want me to stay here he wants me to rise up and start functioning again right and and, and be successful that's as god wanting uh, as a father wanting for the child he wants me to do that so um that that would greatly help us in our motivation right so so to come to that you know make that shift and say in our minds yes i'll do what god wants I'm going with what God wants. I'm not going to stay in this place, right? Uh, because it's not going to help. It's it's difficult. You know, it's, it, our natural tendency is to stay in that place, be weighed down by that guilt. Um, it's it's difficult to make that shift. But to when if, if you start doing that, you start recognizing the truth, what God wants, and we say, you know, I'm, I'm going with that, right? I know it might feel uh, it might feel fake sometimes. I might feel that okay, I've not earned it, or I need to punish myself, you know. Uh, but no, this is what God wants. It's not going to help me to be in that place. Okay? And some practical things, of course, is to is to is to look at scripture and and say, okay, I'm going with scripture. I'm agreeing with God. You know, how does He look at me? Uh, one John one nine. He is faithful. If I confess, He is faithful to forgive me and cleanse me of everything so i'm picking myself up and i'm going on right um and it's uh it's it's also part of renewing our mind it's not that we are taking things lightly it's not that we are you know excusing ourselves you know giving ourselves a clean chip too easily it's not like that but it's really a you know, part of renewing of our mind, renewing our mind to the truth of God's word, God's expectation, the way God sees us, and renewing our mind to how we need to see ourselves uh, will really will really help us bounce back quickly. Yeah, I hope that helps. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, best. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any other <clears throat> questions on this? Um, this whole thing of trust. Yes, Pastor. Yes. Um, how, as a, as a leader, how can we deal with uh, certain individuals, especially when we talk about forgiving others when they do you wrong or they act wrongly? And in life, there are certain people who are arrogant or proud mm. in in as much as they cannot accept their fault or accept their guilt. And then such an individual 
do something wrong or do something that is not good. Mm-hmm. And you try to bring it to him in the form of, you know, restitution or reconciliation. Well, he doesn't accept that what he did is wrong. How can you handle such a situation? Yeah, so the question is, in what way is this person... Okay, let's just, let's just say this uh, hypothetically, this person has done something wrong. So in what way is that person related you know, to you? And is he part uh, of family? Is he part of team? Is he serving alongside? And uh, or is he, uh, you know, you know, someone else? Right. So in each, uh, in each situation, you know, relationally, uh, we we can actually uh, handle uh, this whole thing, you know, in a different way, right? So uh, if he is well serving alongside if this person is serving alongside uh, in in a team then it's very important that the person uh, you know sees what what whatever you know he or she has done uh, to be wrong you know, to have that so it's important for us to see have that uh, um, have that conversation and to and to present our side of the story to say that okay this is why i feel that uh, you know this is wrong right we agreed this is our agreement this is what we are looking at it and uh, and maybe the other person sees things differently okay uh, and maybe the, give you that opportunity for the person to share why they did that and and um, you know, and to and to look at it in the light of scripture, and to see that, um, well, uh, this is why you see, and and you, you know, I, I know, and if if I'm saying it's it's wrong, and what what the person did was wrong, and then maybe that was a wrong call from my side, you know, I need to change, right? But if uh, if look if at looking at the whole problem and the whole situation, and if we realize that okay. What this person did was wrong, and and to to come to an agreement of that. But you're saying, okay, no matter uh, what, this person is not agreeing to it, right? So if the person is uh, like personally from our side, we can actually forgive and release, okay, extend forgiveness, okay, because we know that something has been wronged. Uh, either we have been wronged, or the you know something has been not done right so we we can actually forgive uh in the sight of god you know we we extend forgiveness with release okay but it has to be communicated certain things have to be set right because that that particular wrong what was done has consequences has consequences in a family setting has consequences in a in a ministry team kind of a setting so that consequence has to be kind of spelt out right say that this is why uh, so I, mean, I, don't, I don't know we don't have the specifics of it right isaac uh, so uh, but this is the way to handle it to say that okay if it's a ministry team to say that okay uh, i strongly feel that this, this is the expectation and this is what was set right and this was not kept up and therefore it is wrong so if you have the authority you can say well because it was wrong, I feel that uh, we can't work together. You see it. You see it differently, but I just feel that we cannot, you know, proceed with this. Or say you take some time off and think about what I said. Okay, maybe now you're emotionally all stirred up and all that. You're not able to come to a, you know, we're not able to agree on this. But you take some time off and think about what I said. You know, the reason why I feel this is wrong. I know you're not accepting it right now, but you need to take some time off. Uh, time off serving, time off being in the team, maybe, and think about it. And let's let's approach this again. Let's talk about this again. Uh, if you can do that, right? And uh, and hopefully the person will see your point of view. Yeah, but but I guess you know in all this we are assuming that. You know, uh, this this whatever wrong was done is you're absolutely clear about it, right? Your facts are there. You're not assuming that it was wrong. You're very clear in the light of scripture, in the light of 
you know, everything that it was wrong. So yeah, um, yeah. So that's the way to go about it. I hope that helps, Isaac. Okay, Pastor. Uh, I agree because I'm. Um, mm. I I believe healing or correction is a process. Mm. Yeah. Mm. At certain point, and you said it's it sound a keynote that at least it has to be communicated. Yeah. Maybe at the time the person cannot ac accept, but in due course, yeah, he can renew what you have said, and it can prevent further occurrence. Thank you. Right, right, right. And if the person is, uh, you know, if the person is someone whom you're ministering to, you know, person is in a congregation you're ministering to, and still doesn't see i mean doesn't see that what you said was uh what the correction that you're uh, or what you're what you're bringing forth and that person is not accepting that what they did was wrong then there's not much you can do right you can just present the truth and say this is how you need to live and you're not living this way so therefore it is wrong you can just leave it at that and allow the person to think and work through um but if what they're doing is affecting others, I'm, I'm saying, you know, from a church congregation member perspective, if they, what they're doing is affecting others, then that needs to be addressed. You know, if what they're doing is affecting them personally, uh, is affecting their spiritual life and affecting them individually, uh, then what we can do is present the truth, ask God, you know, trust God to work on their hearts. So that they can change, uh, but if it's going to be affecting others in the in the congregation, then that needs to be addressed and say, okay, if this does not change, then something has to change. You know, it, we cannot allow it to like damage others' lives, affect others' lives. Um, so the cost of that, the consequence of uh, you know that has to be communicated and say, uh, if this not change, then maybe we have to take some action right yeah okay so uh, that is good um, any other questions any other on rebuilding on rebuilding trust anything that we can look at Okay, so um, here are some thoughts okay, um, when it comes to uh, building relationships. You know, it's like um, it's, we can ask ourselves, you know, like we can look at it, you know, am I nurturing? Like, am I investing? You know, that's the next thing that we're going to look at. Um, uh, this, am I doing things to build this trust? Am I investing something to build trust? In the lives of people, right? Um, so <clears throat> we need to look at it that we can, we can look at it that way. Am I doing things with my actions, my thoughts, my words, everything? Uh, is it building trust in people, or is it really, uh, you know, my my communication, my actions, um, my inconsistency in doing things? Is it uh, eroding that trust? We can we can make change. Uh, or we can, you know, uh, make corrections. Okay. Okay. So if if we need to set things right, you know, here are some things. Um, you know, uh, I'm just sharing some uh, from uh, John C. Maxwell's uh, uh, notes. Okay. So then, something that we can do <clears throat> uh, if trust is broken, I apologize. Um, we need to ask ourselves why did I break this trust. Okay, is it something that, my wrong believing, my wrong you know action, something that that is going on in my life, and I'm breaking trust, and I'm you know my uh, my whole thought process, my thought pattern, something that I need to change. The way I look at things, you know, maybe I take people for granted. You know, I need to change that and correct that in my life. Okay, so ask myself, correct that. And to recognize that it's going to take time to rebuild. You know, sometimes we 
uh, we broke trust in people's lives and then we expect a turnaround overnight. Right? We want things to be as they were. And we want it right now, or maybe, <clears throat> you know, in an overnight thing. But uh, we need to understand that we're dealing with, dealing with people, we're dealing with emotions. And the same way, it is difficult for us to trust. When trust is broken, we need to understand that it's difficult for them, for the others, to trust us when the place, the trust they placed in us was broken. So it's going to take time, right? Um, and to rem remember that it is restored when trust is restored by action, by deeds, by works, and not just mere, mere words in a sense, not just saying that, yes, uh, I will do this, or um, I will rebuild trust, I will ensure this happens. It's, it's to follow up on that with action. Okay, so it, it is the work, it is a deed behind our words that will rebuild trust. Okay. Um, so doing these things, well, the new change that you want may not happen immediately, may not even earn that immediately, but it will definitely stop us from, you know, from losing trust or stop others from losing trust in us if we would do this, right? Okay, so I just wanted to share that, okay. Um, okay, so let's look at, um, uh, okay, we have about six more minutes, okay. Let's look at um, the whole thing of, um, uh, you know, when we look at relationship with people, we need to look at it as investment. Okay, so this is something to be nurtured. This is something that's going to take time and effort. Okay. So all relationships can change for the better. The relationship can grow or will grow, but it requires something. It requires nurture and it requires investment. Okay, and uh, well, if you look at family, if you look at uh, you know marriage, if you look at friendship, we did this, you know, we did this uh, uh, naturally. And you look at friendships. If you look at some, you know, some of the you know best friendships that you've had or you have, you see that we've done this investment, but we didn't think of it as investment, right? We, the spending time, the giving. Um, the sharing, the caring, the helping, right? We did it. So maybe as children, maybe as youth, and over the years we did it, and the friendship is what it is because of all these things that we did, and we didn't even consciously think about it, but we did it anyway. We spent time, right? We listened, uh, we shared of ourselves, we shared things with us, we helped in times of need, um, and and all this nurtured that friendship, right? And it's so much easier because um, when you look at family, when we look at, you know, you have this, you have this, let's say this bank balance of that investment. Right? We have this history of all these years of investing and sharing and caring and all that is there. And um, we forget that it, it takes that for the relationship to, thrive right it's it's that history of investment it's that history of nurture and care which has actually brought it to what it is and and also the opposite of that the flip side of it is also true it's the history of lack of care lack of nurture maybe selfishness which results in poor relationships which results in, and, and we know it takes two people to build relationships. And uh, we can't just be hard on ourselves and say, okay, I did not do my part. Maybe it's the other person also. But at the same time, you know, we need to understand that it's this history okay, of nurture and investment that results, it snowballs into 
this what we see today okay, so if we understand that then then we we can know that okay i need to do some things intentionally now okay um this uh, this team this uh, you know this ministry team this team that i'm working with this uh, uh, this person whom God has placed in my life to mentor, or any kind of, you know, relationships that you are looking at, um, you, then you realize that, okay, it requires nurture. It's not going to happen automatically, right? We did it when we were growing up uh, in school, in in college, and you know, we we did it naturally uh, as. You know, as people who are as uh, as kids you know, growing up, and we spend time in play and you know, sports and hobbies and all that, and it was it's so much easier then. But now, as adults, um, well, you don't have that kind of a uh, luxury of you know of time where we play or hang out and and all that. And also, the the dynamic of the relationship is is different, right? So. The only thing that we we can do is to understand that yes, it requires investment and it requires nurture. Okay, um, that's that's if we understand that, then we can we can actually make a big change in uh, any of these any of the relationships. Okay, okay. So the so next class we'll look at probably we'll watch the video also uh, where we. Where John C. Maxwell talks about these principles. Um, he talks about the garden, uh, looking at uh, the relationship as a as a garden, and uh, how it thrives when it's when there's care, when it's watered, when it's nurtured, um, when things are you know weeded out, uh, which are unnecessary, which choke a relationship, and and uh, and and other principles like the 101 principle 101 person principle and celebration principle and so on uh, you know basically you know simple uh, you know thoughts of wisdom uh, that we can actually practically uh, carry out and which helps us in relationships right so so we'll look at that in our in our next uh, couple of classes so we'll stop uh, right here thank you so much god bless you bye bye Thank you, Pastor.